Coming up on Mountain News this morning, one Kentucky man was pardoned by the governor, and he makes it a personal mission to help make elections easier for people who also spent time behind bars. And the fire department and the Big Sandy gather during the weekend for important training meant to help them save lives. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. 6.33 on this Monday. It's the beginning of the work week. I'm Dakota Makris. Yeah, I don't know. We have to go through Mondays every week. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at our chilly forecast, of which, you know, I said earlier I blame him for. So, <laughs> Listen, get blamed for when it's too hot. Get blamed for when it's too cold. I, I'm used to it. I've been doing this a long time, so just keep it on. I told you, I said, we don't blame you for the, for the nice weather. No. Only when it snows or something like that. Exactly. But I can handle it. I, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the current conditions out there. And Dakota's right, it is cold out there this morning. UVA-wise, cloud deck has retreated. It is about 27 over there right now. Visibility pretty good. Feels like 20 because the dew point's a little bit low this morning. A bit of a breeze potentially over that way. Everybody in the 20s except for Moorhead and Hazard. Both hanging on at 30 right now at the airports. So again, a little higher ground there this morning. Temperatures mostly in the upper 20s. Let's take a look at the region 41 New York and Myrtle Beach this morning and that is it everybody else is in the 20s and 30s out there this morning it was in the teens in Carbondale Illinois a little bit earlier so the breakfast forecast going to take us up into the upper 40s this afternoon enjoy a mix of sun and clouds today because all that changes when those clouds move back in tonight ahead of a new system that's going to impact us on your Tuesday Dakota all right, Brennan, thank you. A prayer vigil was held Sunday night for the victim of a deadly crash that happened Friday. State police say 17-year-old Macy Wynan lost control of her vehicle while driving on Old Richmond Road, causing it to go over a steep embankment and into the Kentucky River. She was a student at Frederick Douglass High School before transferring to Lafayette. Uh, Jeremy Toms was at last night's vigil and has more on how Macy's being remembered. Friends and family gathered at Frederick Douglass High School Sunday night to lean on one another as they remembered the life and grieved the loss of Macy Wyan. Thank you for the, the hope of new heaven and a new earth where every tear will be wiped away. Where there will Prayers be and emotions were all that could cut through a chilly night in Lexington. Uh, Macy was the love of my life. We never expected anything like this to happen in our entire life. With the Are vigil occurring just a day Macy, after we learned that Macy's home. life was lost, raw emotion rushed through the crowd that came to mourn her. Each loved one lit a candle in her memory, leaving a reminder of the bright light she provided to those she touched, a light that went out too soon. Macy's mother, Jennifer McClure, made one request of Macy's many friends on Sunday, to not let her daughter's life be forgotten. I don't know what we're going to do without her. So I need you all to really support us and love us. All you girls, come over to the house. Never leave us alone. Vigil organizers say they will gather again Tuesday to keep processing their emotions and keep celebrating Macy's life. In Lexington, Jeremy Toms, WKYT. Several FCPS teachers and staff were among those who attended the vigil. In a letter to families, FCPS said it would have a team of grief counselors at the high school Monday. Every election day, millions of people cast their votes and to make their voices heard. Still, there are thousands who can't because they've been convicted. But Governor Andy Bashir changed that with an executive order restoring voting rights for nonviolent offenders once they complete their sentences. One man who the governor pardoned, Savvy Chavez, has been making it his mission to help make the voting process easier for those people. Like a person coming home, a person being able to find employment, uh, sustainable housing, sustainable employment, and be able to come back to their families and their communities and actually be a part of that. Well, he is the president of an organization called All of Us or None, which aims to make the voting process easier and possible for those who have been convicted. Redistricting, redistricting was a hot topic in the last Kentucky legislative session. Members of the Democratic Party opted that redistricting was unfair before a state judge struck that down. Well, one of the races that was impacted by redistricting was the battle of to be the 94th district representative. Incumbent Democrat Angie Hatton lost to challenger Republican Dr. Jacob Justice. 
Kentucky elections expert Al Cross says Hatton might have won the election if she was in her original district. I think it can be said without contradiction that if she'd been allowed to keep uh, the district she'd had before, she would have been reelected because uh, people are inclined to keep their representative uh, or senator unless uh, that person has uh, uh, offended them in some way. And uh, uh, she's apparently done a pretty decent job. And uh, Well, Issues and Answers with Steve Hensley and his interview with Al Cross will air tonight at 7 o'clock right here on WYMT. While many of us enjoyed Sunday football and time with family yesterday, some were out training to keep their community safe. Our Jordan Mullins has more from McGoffin County where firefighters conducted live training exercises with a car prop to simulate a fire contained to a small car. The Kentucky Fire Commission held state fire rescue training throughout the week with their car prop. Vehicle fire can be extremely dangerous. Not You have to worry about the tires exploding. You have to worry about uh, the shock absorbers on the front and rear bumpers exploding. On Sunday, live fire training was held at the Salyersville Fire Department, inviting departments from across the region to take part. In a training setting, we try to make it as realistic as possible, but also as safe as possible. And by using the prop that's here today, we'll, we'll be able to accomplish uh, both goals. And firefighters use real tactics so they know what to do in a real life situation. It, it keeps my firefighters safe by knowing to have their, their protective clothing on like we got today and, and uh, how to, to approach a car from the side rather than the front or the rear. Training to keep themselves and their community safe. If, if the car's on fire, get away from it and, and call the fire department, call 911 to get the fire department out. Don't try to put a car far out with, by yourself or, or with a small fire extinguisher. Putting in the hours to prepare for the next call. In Salyersville, Jordan Mullins, WIMT Mountain News. Sirensville Fire Chief Paul Howard also adds, despite the training, calls never stop and crews are still able to respond if need be. Well, Barney Cornett and Leo McMillan tried to run about 40 5Ks a year. For this past weekend, they invited the whole community out to come run for their birthdays. But what's really impressive is the pair. They are 85 and 86 years old. And they say the people, the friendships, and the charities are what keep their feet moving. This race will benefit Special Olympics Kentucky and the Heinemann Settlement School here in our region. Leo and Bernie say the people who came to their birthday bash are more like family now. But what they didn't realize was that they've inspired so many others to run. If these are our brothers and sisters, every one of them. We love every one of them spiritually, mentally, and physically, and every way. We, we, we encourage each other to run and finish, especially him. So, you know? We do great. We do great together. It's really it's just good friendship. Well, they say even with the cold temperatures, they're so grateful for the amount of people who came out to celebrate their birthday. Six forty-one. Kudos to them. I do good to do a couple of five Ks a year, and I'm not even forty years old yet. So we take a look at our temperatures this morning: thirty in Hazard, thirty in Moorhead. That is it. Everybody else falling fast: twenty-two in Irvine, twenty-eight London, Somerset, twenty-five Clintwood, Monticello, twenty-three in Jonesville. So those temperatures continue to fall. Your outdoor forecasts are going to go back up once the sun comes up this morning. You're going to see those heading into the upper forties. Yes, no seventies today. Upper. 40s about the best we'll do and today could be the warmest day of the entire week dakota all right brennan thank you well at 6 42 still to come here on mountain news this morning america's fitness industry is starting to bounce back after the pandemic dealt a big blow to it we'll have more on that in just a few minutes